I think that everyone has heard at least something about the ketogenic diet, or uh, they've even tried it out. However, they might be in different stages of their journey. In this video, I'm going to talk about the life cycle of a keto dieter. Check out Let's Get Checked, who offer different at-home blood tests. Use the link in the description to get a 20% discount of all their tests with the code SEAMLAND. Being in ketosis means you have high levels of blood ketones that exert distinct metabolic effects. You would have to either fast or restrict your carbs in order to produce them. Here are some of the benefits of ketone bodies. Reduced inflammation and inhibition of inflammatory markers like NFKB, TNF-alpha and COX-2. Neuroprotection against seizures, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Protection against oxidative stress. Blood sugar stabilization. Improved mitochondrial function. Activation of the NRF2 antioxidant system and glutathione, suppression of appetite and cravings, decreased growth and proliferation of cancer cells, inhibition of HTACs, which are enzymes that are associated with cancer, aging and oxidative stress, elevation of sirtuins and NAD, which are associated with longevity. As you can see, ketones are quite awesome. In one of my previous videos, I outlined the three stages of the ketogenic diet that almost everyone will eventually go through. However, as an individual, you'll also go through a life cycle of your own. So now let me walk you through it. Stage number one, starting keto. The first step is to obviously start by going on a low-carb keto diet. But generally, eating less than 100 grams of carbs per day is already going to make your body run on primarily fat and ketones, even if you're not in ketosis all the time. During this stage, most people will do everything by the book. They're gonna get rid of all the carbs, no sugar, no processed food, no bread, no fruit, no cake, no chips, no ice cream. They eat only vegetables, salad, meat, eggs, fish, nuts, and uh, maybe like these keto-friendly bars or low-carb cookies. It depends on the person, but most people, they're gonna report weight loss or at least water weight loss. They have less inflammation, more energy, fewer cravings, less hunger, more satiety, mental clarity, etc. The smarter ones realize that it could be because of losing weight and cleaning up their diet, which can be achieved by any other whole foods based diet. Others who've never experienced something like this may believe that it's just, you know, keto magic. So this is the honeymoon phase of the keto diet. If, however, you experience negative symptoms like lethargy, brain fog, fatigue, keto flu and malaise, then it's probably because of electrolyte deficiencies or just under eating. Going low carb makes you lose sodium through water excretion, and you can prevent that by just increasing your salt intake. Salted pork! The second stage is the carbophobe stage that the majority of keto dieters go through for at least a short while. They basically get scared of eating carbs, and they are afraid of getting kicked out of ketosis because they're afraid of losing their benefits that you get from stage number one. In this stage, a person might manically try to avoid everything that's not keto-proof, or something that doesn't fit their perceived narrative. They counter carbs as to not exceed 30 grams, they read all the labels carefully to find any hidden sugars or sweeteners, and worst of all, they start arguing with other people on social media about how carbs and sugar are the root of all chronic disease like diabetes, obesity and heart disease. Fortunately, there are many people who don't go through this stage, and they can either go back to a normal way of eating after having tried keto, or they'll just stay low carb with much more loose guidelines. The third stage is the one where they're gonna actually break ketosis. Because let's be honest, eventually it's gonna happen in some shape or form. You could get stuck in the carbophobe stage for the rest of your life and not eat a single gram of extra sugar ever again. However, most people, they're gonna end up eating some carbs, whether by accident or they do it deliberately. This is the kind of breaking point that will determine the future life cycle of your keto diet. It's going to take two paths based on how you respond and react. If you eat carbs and have a bad experience like weight gain, overeating, bloating, inflammation, brain fog, and self-loading, then you probably want to go back to the first stage. There, you see, I ate carbs and all these bad things happened. Disappointed! This is gonna throw you back into the first stage where you'll get back on track. You'll see those benefits again and you'll go back into the carbophobe stage. If, however, you eat carbs and have a positive or like at least a neutral experience, then you may have an epiphany. You're gonna realize that carbs aren't bad, insulin isn't bad, and sugar isn't bad. What's bad is overeating and just eating too much of anything. So now this is the last stage that I want to introduce you to. The metabolic flexibility stage. 
Metabolic flexibility refers to the ability to burn various fuel sources in different conditions. You can swap between burning carbs and ketones quite fast, and you won't have to go through the keto flu again whenever you do break ketosis. To be metabolically flexible, you can't eat all the carbs you want whenever you feel like it. You still need some form of carbohydrate restriction to make it work, and you need to be insulin sensitive, because if you're not keto adapted, then you'll just feel awful whenever you do eat keto because you don't get enough carbs. Ketosis and keto adaptation, they aren't mutually inclusive and they have some other differences. So here's how I define the two. Being in ketosis is the actual metabolic state with the appropriate levels of blood sugar and ketone bodies. It's said that ketosis begins at 0.5 millimoles of blood ketones, but I think that even 0.3 is already good enough. On the flip side, the keto adaptation process makes your body adapt to utilizing fat and ketones as a primary source of energy. It means that you don't have to rely on glucose and you can thrive on consuming dietary fat or by burning your own stored body fat. You can tap into your fat reserves very fast whenever liver glycogen gets depleted and you won't experience negative symptoms from staying low carb. With high metabolic flexibility, you have high energy when eating low carb, you don't need to eat frequently, you can fast, you can burn body fat for several days, and you have relatively low fasting insulin and low blood sugar. However, you're also able to eat carbs and even sugar without feeling like your heart is about to explode, or getting hit with a club the next day, you're able to get back into ketosis really fast. Metabolic flexibility is characterized by high adaptability, meaning that you can make rapid changes in your metabolism without the side effects, you're able to tolerate all foods, starting with gluten and ending with sugar, and lastly, you're not afraid of carbs or insulin, and you're able to cycle different foods based on the situation. Perfectly balanced. I think that metabolic flexibility should be the final goal, because it refers to the most optimal state of your metabolism, where you can make changes very fast and you're able to adapt to it. Everyone goes through these stages. Some are perpetually cycling between being a carbophobe and breaking ketosis. It creates this restriction and binge cycle where you're manically avoiding all carbs, but then you accidentally break and you go off the rails completely. This makes you even more scared of eating anything that you think isn't safe and creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. Metabolic flexibility is just gonna give you more freedom and it's definitely more adaptable. The most important quality of survival as well as optimization is being able to adapt and make the right changes. Being stubborn and dogmatic is going to make you hit a plateau and keeps you stuck. So there you have it, this is the life cycle of a keto dieter. Let me know in which stage of the cycle are you in. If you want to know how to optimize fasting as well as cyclical ketosis and meal timing, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay flexible, stay empowered.